I just want to give you a really big update of all the things that have been going on since our last video, which was the adventures out on a lagoon catamaran. So it's been almost 11 months since that was posted, and the reason is that shortly after it was posted, the pandemic really got going. I became a virtual teacher for a while, things became quite scarce at the shops, and our Australian borders closed, our West Australian borders closed, and for a while there, the borders around our region closed as well, which meant you couldn't leave our city. So this left us with a lot of time to continue the planning and the research that has been going on over the past few years. So because this is a long-term plan, and for Trent, it's been a plan since childhood, we have done a lot of research and financial planning. So first of all, uh, with the finances, there is our jobs. So the three of us are qualified in different industries and we've saved a lot of that money. With the money we saved, we haven't just stuck it in a bank account and left it there. Instead, we've been investing it in the stock market to try to improve the returns. We've also found ways to make money outside of work. And between the two of those, we've now figured out how we can do that both online and nomadically on the boat, which is fantastic. The house that I'm sitting in right now belongs to Trent and that will be sold to pay for a majority of the yacht. With the boat, we knew there was a few non-negotiables. So first of all, it had to be a catamaran. We didn't want a monohull, just a catamaran. Next thing, we were happy with second hand. As long as it didn't have structural issues like some of the hurricane damage boats did, we were happy to renovate it and replace systems as needed. Over the past few years, we have gone to look at boats in our area. We didn't film that just to respect the privacy of the owners. We had intended on going to the International Yacht Show, but that was cancelled. So we've really been limited lately to looking in our area. Now, unfortunately, while it's coastal, Perth is about as far from a robust boat market as you could possibly get. If you want to buy a boat in Australia, you really have to go up to Queensland because that's where the Whitsundays and the Great Barrier Reef and the Pacific Ocean are. But that's not an option for us right now. We did manage to go and look at a Fontaine Pajot at a local boat show, but weren't overly impressed with the build quality. So Leopard's, Leopard's completely glassed that out and covered yeah. it in the mould because it, the propensity of it. a few custom yachts and while they had some fantastic ideas they just weren't really the boat for us. As well as looking at second-hand yachts we did also investigate the possibility of having a new production catamaran. Now obviously these are much more expensive and there's certain brands that to be honest we're just not interested in because of the issues that other people have had. It came down in the end to Sea Wind and Leopard and the one boat that we really couldn't go past was the Leopard 45. We loved the forward facing cockpit, the area up the top, there's just so much about these boats that fits with our lifestyles and what we want in our future. But the price of a new catamaran has normally been outside of our budget. With the way the world was going in 2020, with the uncertainty, with the economic issues, the lockdowns, we did have an opportunity present itself that was just too good to pass up. So after weeks of negotiations and discussions with Leopard, Trent was able to negotiate a very favourable deal for us, which meant that we have now put down a deposit and ordered a 2021 Leopard 45. It is going to be ready in June of this year. So. The words cannot describe how excited we were when this happened. It's not something we ever thought would happen. We thought we were going secondhand. So I just, I cannot wait to take you on this journey with us. As soon as the contract was signed, it was slight celebration, huge panic, and let's get started organizing everything. So we've booked the Airbnb for the trip over there. And at the moment, the plan is that Trent and Tynan will fly over to Cape Town to deal with handover and some of the aftermarket things that they want to get done. 
In the meantime, I will stay here in Australia with Rosie. She's our main consideration for that. We don't want to be putting her through a multi-stop long haul flight. It's just not a healthy thing for a dog to do. So depending on what happens with the Australian customs officers, Trent and Tynan will come back through Australia to pick up Rosie and as well some of the things that we've started to acquire for the yacht. So even though it is a new yacht, no yacht comes exactly as you want it to be. So we've started to purchase things that we know we're going to need or will be helpful for us. The reason we've started so early is that, first of all, we want to make sure that we think of everything, so we'll need time to do that. And the other thing is, if you start early, you can look for deals. So we love a good sale, Trent's an excellent negotiator, so most of what we've brought has been for a very good price or a significant discount. So I will show you all of that in a minute. Before I go more into what we've been buying, I just wanna talk a little bit more about the actual boat itself. So the boat that we've chosen is the three cabin owners version. And we've chosen that because obviously there's three of us, so there's that, but also they appear to have a much better resale value than the four bedroom charter style. Because Trent is selling his house, we have discussed it and completely agreed that he deserves to have the owner's cabin. So the owner's cabin has his bedroom at the back near the engines, a storage and workspace in the middle, and then a private bathroom at the front that is significantly bigger than the bathrooms on the other side. And on the other side of the hull, I'll be in the rear cabin down near the engines, while Tynan will be at the other end in the front cabin. Now the reason he wanted that front cabin is that it has a little storage space in front of it and we'll both have our own separate bathrooms, which I am very happy about. <laughs> when Trent was doing the initial discussions with Leopard, we did have to make a lot of choices about what's going to be done in the factory, what's going to be done in Cape Town aftermarket, and what we'll do ourselves later. So in the Cape Town factory, Robertson and Kane will be doing a number of upgrades for us that we've chosen specifically because it is easier, cheaper and smarter to have them done at the initial build stage when the roof and the different layers of the catamaran are being joined together. So for example, we will be having the air conditioning put in and the reason for that is we've been told that in Asia it's especially important to keep the humidity under control to help prevent mould spreading in the boat. We'll have fans put into all of the bedrooms and I think in the saloon as well, which by running that wiring then, we have additional wiring in each room that can be used for something else. We'll also have the blinds put in because apparently it's very difficult to have those put in later. We're having a table put in that can drop down and form an extra bed in the saloon in case we have guests. And we'll be having as much fridge and freezer space as we can possibly have. We've even had to pick some of the final touches, including the color of the cushions, now initially we thought we'd go for the stock fabric which is more of a vinyl, but we've since changed our mind and been convinced that Sunbrella is a better option because the Sunbrella fabric can be maintained and cleaned a lot easier and I now have a machine that will sew that Sunbrella and I'll go more into that later, but we think that's going to be a really nice upgrade as well. After the boat is completed and handover has taken place, we will be doing a number of aftermarket upgrades. Now some of these upgrades will be completed with Leopard Catamaran Aftermarket, which at the moment in Cape Town is headed by Marcel. So he will be helping us to do things like install the lithium ion battery system and the solar panels. Aside from the upgrades that Leopard will be doing, Trent and Tynan also intend on doing a few things themselves while in Cape Town. So they will be bringing tools and equipment with them from Australia and doing jobs like installing the water maker system and our new forward facing sonar which actually gives us a full sonar projection of everything 200 metres in front of the boat. So that I think is going to be particularly invaluable when we are going through uncharted waters with large amounts of reefs or bombs. After the factory list and the Cape Town list, there is actually a third list as well, which is things that we think we want to get done but don't necessarily have to be done straight away. So those things will probably be done in either Southeast Asia or New Zealand, depending on where we end up. As you can see, Tynan has been hard at work renovating the house. As I said earlier, we are selling it, so we want to make sure that it is ready for the new owners. Okay, so this here, is the stuff room. So the stuff room is the place in the house that we've allocated to keep most of the things that are either going straight to Cape Town or getting picked up by the yacht later. 
Now, obviously this is not everything. There's still a lot in the bedrooms, in the office, and even the kitchen, but this is kind of where the key things are being kept that can't really be used for anything else. Milwaukee tools are definitely the favoured ones in this house. So over the years, Trent and Tynan have collected a lot of different Milwaukee tools, as well as the batteries that go along with them. So we've brought a couple of new ones, like this cordless multi-tool to go on the yacht, and those are what we will be using to do most of our maintenance and modifications. As you can see, it wasn't clickbait. We are taking a chainsaw with us. It's powered by Milwaukee as well. And the reason we are taking it is boat defense. This here is the stainless steel pegs that we're going to need for washing on the boat. These were a special buy at the local supermarket for $7. With the money that we got from a cashback sale at a local tool shop, we bought this. So this is a thermal imaging camera, which on a yacht we think could be used to find electrical faults and any issues with the engine. But to be honest, since we bought it, all we've done is run around the house pointing it at things. Here are the boxes for our medical kit and this here is apparently my new best friend which will be used for scrubbing various things around the yacht. So without a doubt one of the most important systems on this entire catamaran is going to be this because if this coffee machine is not working then we are not working. So it is a Breville coffee machine we got it at 40% off and it makes really really good coffee so pretty happy with that one. Is my brand new sour right sewing machine. So buying a sour right sewing machine was quite the investment because they are very expensive to bring into Australia. But after a lot of time and thought, I decided that it was probably worth it because if we ever have a situation on the catamaran like a sail tears, I'm going to be able to fix it. Now I chose sour right in particular because they do have a very good reputation, a lot of online support, and hopefully in future if I ever need to some resale value. I have already started making a few things. My first one was a um, was a cushion for Rosie. It was okay if you don't look too closely. <laughs> then I've also made some neoprene cases and a giant duffel bag to store all of my diving equipment in. I've also heard that when you're out on the water, it's possible to make a little bit of extra cash sewing things for other cruises like bimini's, sail bag covers, upholstery, really whatever people need. So that will also make this machine very handy. You can probably tell, but this here is a scuba tank holder. Now usually these are just foam, but as you can probably tell, this one has been reinforced. And that's because when we were in the shop buying them, Trent had the really good idea of taking these away and spraying them with spray on ute tray liner. So what that has done is sealed them so the salt water won't be able to get in to damage them and neither will small little naughty dogs who like to chew on things. So these will be perfect for storing the tanks for our side mount and rear mount diving sets that we're going to have on the boat so that we can make cleaning easier and also explore that incredible underwater environment that we're going to be living just above. Once we move aboard the yacht and get settled, a sport that we really want to get into is kiteboarding. Now, none of us have kiteboarded before, so the first sort of step we've taken in the sport is buying the equipment. So I have a board already and so does Trent. We got them on sale because they're the 2019 models. I've also bought myself a belt. It was on sale too and it was one of the smallest ones in the shop. So that's good, it actually fits. Now as far as I can tell, the only things we have left to buy are belts for the boys, a board for Tynan and the kites. So if you have any advice, you know, we are beginners in this sport. So feel free to pop it in the comments below and hopefully in future you'll see us out on the water. So now that I've talked about where we've come from with thinking that we were going to get a second hand yacht and outfit it, to being in the position of waiting for delivery of our new Leopard 45, I want to talk about what comes next. So the next thing on our list is our tender. So when we're thinking about a tender, we had a look at some of the popular inflatable brands like Highfield, but Trent in particular was concerned about 
the possibility of it popping and the fact they need replacing relatively frequently, which was not something that we particularly want to do because over time those costs add up. So instead, he has managed to source us a Australian made aluminium dinghy, which is being fabricated in the Eastern States and should be on its way to Perth soon. So once that arrives, I'll show you all of the features, what it looks like, how it's going to work, and let you know some of the plans we have for customizing that dinghy to make it work for us. So until then, feel free to hit the subscribe button so you get a notification when that video pops up and we'll see you soon.